Hey, what's going on? And welcome to Streams Talk with Doc. Hope that your day is going well for you. I like to put a bug in your ear. I tell you that all the time. Listen, this is not about me saying that I got some knowledge that you don't contain within yourself, that you are less than I am and I'm greater than you. That's bullshit. I don't go down like that. I don't get down like that. I just like to put a bug in your ear. And today, my bug is going to be personal, but then it affects you or anybody who's listening also. I'm a black male, and I'm very proud of that. I don't even know what that 100% means. I was born black. I was born a male. I have no control over either one of those. Those were predetermined for me. But because I turned out the way that I am, I am very proud of who I am and what I am. Okay, so I guess that clarifies it. But I also love golf. This is a game that I've been ostracized. I've been made fun of because there's no way a black male from quote unquote the streets, the ghetto is supposed to love a game called golf. I grew up in a time before Tiger Woods. There was no Tiger Woods, even though I heard of plenty of Tiger Woods jokes. Uh, I could not get my friends to come partake in it. I've always had to play this game with others, meaning Hispanics or whites. I could never get a young brother from the neighborhood who was my age to come partake, even going to driving range. I know that things have gotten better. People now partake in things that they didn't normally do. But to get to you, to get to the world, to get to everybody, don't let what you were born dictate what you will do. You have the right to enjoy anything that is legal, that is out there, that you can afford, that you enjoy, that you're willing to put equity, sweat, and tears into learning, perfecting the best of your abilities, and having a good time. This is called life. And nobody has the right to tell you if you're black, you can't listen to polka. If you're white, you can't listen to hip hop, or you can't dance and live a hip hop lifestyle. We let others, outsiders, put restrictions on us that are, do not belong. They don't have the right. They don't have the ability. We have to take back all the power. If it is something, like I said, that is legal and you enjoy it, you have the right to partake in it. You don't steal somebody else's culture. And I don't consider golf white culture. I just consider it a game. I was not having a lot of access to this game as a youth growing up. I didn't know much about it. One day I caught the bug, and the bug is still there 30 something years later. I love it. I just brought my own clubs in 2020. First time that I ever had tailor made clubs. Not meaning the brand tailor made. Tailored to me, tailored to my body, to my swing. I've owned about five sets of golf clubs. And every time that I get a new set, I bless somebody with my old set. No charge. Just because I want to see more and more people pick up this game. I grew up a football player. I grew up a boxer. I wasn't the world's best basketball player, but I was a decent enough basketball player to play three on threes, some little five on fives. I even played in the lawyer's league. But basketball is not my forte. It's just something that I could do. It was fun. Everybody in the neighborhood did it. But we get older. When you get in your late 40s, early 50s, and beyond, you might not be able to play football anymore. You might not be able to wrestle anymore. You might not be able to do some of the athletic things that you used to be able to do with no issues, no problems. So it's all right to pick up a hobby that you might be able to enjoy into your senior years. And I'm so glad that I did this, not only with the podcasting, but with the golf. So like I said, once again, I'm not going to belabor the point. Don't let anybody dictate to you because of where you come from, and who you are, the nationality, your nationality, your skin tone, what you should and should not be involved in. If you truly love it, you will find time for it. You will learn it. You will invest in it. And you will try to be the very best. You're not trying to take anything away from anybody. So Pat Stillwell, an actor who used to be an athlete, he was in the NFL and he used to be on the Dukes of Hazard. He died 
at the age of 83. Peter Solari, who won an Emmy for Newhart, was on Bosom Buddies with uh, Tom Hanks. He passed away at the age of 66. And Tommy DeBarge from the group Switch, he wasn't a member of the DeBarge. He's a member of the DeBarge family, but he wasn't in the DeBarge family group. He was actually in a, another group called Switch. They had a couple of hits. He died at the age of 64. And unfortunately, I didn't know that Sarah Dash from LaBelle, and she used to sing with the Rolling Stones. She passed away at the age of 76. Now, this might have been in September, so forgive me. And James Michael Taylor, Tyler from Friends TV show. I guess he worked in that uh, coffee shop. He died at the age of 59. So I say rest in peace to all of them. The COVID cases in the U.S. are up to 47 million cases. 756,000 people have died. We up to 413 million vaccinated people. Now, worldwide, we have to 245 million cases and 5 million people have died. Now, this Delta variant has taken another turn, but the United States government is not going to close its borders to Europe and foreign countries. So it seems like we keep getting stuck in the mud. I mean, I wish somebody had a great answer for this, but nobody seems to. So we'll do what we can. You be safe. You do what you're supposed to do. Get inoculated. Be careful. If you can distance yourself at times, distance yourself. Wear that mask. Stay safe. Stay healthy for yourself. Stay healthy for your family. Stay healthy for general public. So Nicholas Cruz, he pleaded guilty. He pled guilty to 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder in the 2018 Mallory Stone Man Douglas High School shooting. This kid is an a mess, man. This kid is a mess. He's trying to save himself from being locked up in a maximum security, you know, Florence type 23 hour lockdown a day situation. But for him to sit there as he pleads guilty and then come up with an excuse that marijuana had anything to do with his brain being the way it is, is weak. It is really weak. He's got the rest of his life to think about the horror, the terror, and the evil that he has brought upon these people, their families, and anybody who knew these people even a little bit. These were kids, man. These were kids who didn't even get a chance to live, and he snuffed their lives out. And Nicholas Cruz really has nothing that he can say or do in this world which will make anything any better for anybody. He needs to go away. The judge needs to throw the book at him. Let's rid ourselves of this guy and let him move on. So Alex Bowen discharged a prop gun on the movie set that killed the uh, cinematographer and injured the director. Now there's a rule, and it's rule number one of all gun ownerships, fake, real, or whatever, because a blank bullet is still a bullet, people. It's still is a projectile it still comes through the cylinder and barrel and it still has a firing pin so even though it normally should not kill it can still cause great bodily damage we have tender eyes we have throats we have noses we have ears this thing gets lodged or shoots it can cause permanent damage and in this case it caused a death i got nothing to say about alex bowen other than the fact that Rule number one, and he might be a gun owner. He should know you never point a gun at anything that you do not want to destroy. Ever point a gun at anything that you do not want to permanently destroy. Now, Alex probably didn't know, and I'm not going to speak on this because I don't know any facts. So if I say that and I'm wrong later, it's going to be shame on me, and I don't want to be in one of those positions. But this was a total failure by everybody involved. To have live rounds in a prop gun made no sense. This is Hollywood. They're going to have to figure out how to CGIF, the flame coming through the barrel type thing. They do everything else CGIF. I mean, we have 
90 foot monsters in movies. We are in space in movies. So this should be an easy fix. There's no need for guns of any sort that can literally fire even a blank. Now, why Alex was pointing this at the cinematographer, which I'm saying, forgive me here, the actor that he was supposed to point it at must be feeling very lucky today because that bullet could have been for them. Because in his mind, at least his character's mind, he was meant to destroy the other actor, not the cinematographer. The cinematographer is so innocent in this. This is ridiculous because she wasn't even the one he should have ever pointed this gun at to begin with. Now, American Horror Story, double feature. The first part was the vampires. The second part was the aliens. I could not have been more disappointed in a finale than I was in this. This was just a horrible, horrible last half season. The humans had no wins. They came up with every kind of conspiracy theory that they possibly get throw and see what was stuck on the wall. And maybe you felt it was cute to find out Marilyn Monroe was actually killed by alien. John F. Kennedy's assassination was set up by aliens. Nixon's impeachment was set up by aliens. So it was a real waste. I wish I could get that time back, but I couldn't. So now the Wu-Tang Clan, American Saga, they are now at the position where the songs are out there, they have the music, they have the act now, but everybody is dead ass broke and they are waiting. They are waiting for the opportunity to put some money in their pocket. Uh, Raekwon's mother has been evicted. Uh, Ghostface woman and him are having financial problems. So for the most part, other than just two or three people in the clan, everybody else is sweating the next dollar. I mean, so far it seems like ODB is just rolling with the flow. Method Man is not sweating it. Uh, the Jizz not sweating it. And Riz is not sweating it. But for the most part, everybody else is really waiting for some money to flow through. Now, we know how this turns out, but this is interesting to see. One, how they develop the songs. Two, how they held themselves together. Because you, God, was arrested for selling drugs in the last episode because he still needs to eat. Now, the impeachment, American Crime Story Season 3, the impeachment, Monica Lewinsky and Clinton, uh, we are now entering the phase where he has to testify. And they got Clinton lying like a mother effer, man. I mean, Clinton is lying big time on the stand. And so that's that's quite interesting. Saturday Night Live is back. I found out that Curb Your Enthusiasm season 11 reopened last night. I have not got to see Saturday Night Live's episode yet. I have not got to see the episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, but Curb Your Enthusiasm has always been funny. And I haven't even seen Bob Hart's Abby Shuler this week. Now, what I did watch was The Dark Side of the Ring, and it was extreme and obscene, the raw black XPW episode. This was an interesting wrestling organization that I did not know much about, and I pretty much thought I knew wrestling, but it was like a this bra black was a porn producer or something like that. And he also owned this extreme pro wrestling who he seemed to have a lot of beef with ECW. They had used the same wrestlers. At least they used uh, New Jack on and off. Maybe Tommy Dream of people like that. And it was a break between Paulie and Rob Black. And there was some things done. Uh, Mr. Black would not take part in this particular documentary, so we all getting everything from just one side, and that's it. Law and Order, both Law and Orders suffered this week from some pretty bad writing. I don't know why we were flashing back to Liv's prior life, uh, uh, the fact that she didn't even see that her being in a relationship with a 21 year old when she was 15 was a form of sexual abuse, even though she cuffs and locks people up for this on a weekly basis for 22 years on this show. I just thought it was pretty bad. I thought it was also bad on the organized crime where Stabler has this fake son that his character undercovers comes to town 
and he doesn't get rid of this boy. He does nothing to save this boy. So we'll see how the ending season goes. I also watched the Many Saints of Newark. This was the prequel to The Sopranos. Now, if you're expecting a lot about Tony Soprano's character, you're not going to get it. Tony Soprano's son who played uh, him young, he's not really hugely featured in this. This is about Uncle Dickie, Uncle Dickie Malasante, the guy who basically ran the family. So it was kind of interesting. Was it great? No. Was it good? Yes, I will say that it was a good watch. I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I enjoyed it. I don't think that you got to have shooting in a gangster film every 16 seconds to tell a story. And this leads into potentially watching Tony grow up his teenage and early 20s to 30 years to see how he really rolls. Because when this ended, he really wasn't a gangster. He's a kid. Okay, he is just a kid trying to make it. He's a kid listening to his music, hanging out with his buddies, not really involved with a lot of stuff, just little minor things here and there. He loves football. He's playing football, so that's how it's going. The UFC had a card this weekend. Paulo Costa, who came in tremendously overweight early in the week, they had to bump this fight up from 185 to 205. He fought Marvin Vittori. Now, Dana says that Paulo no longer can fight at 185, but he now has to fight at 205. And Paulo Costa is saying, no, I can do it. But so far, he hasn't proved that he can. I mean, he at one point, he was 26 pounds overweight, and this was like a week leading up to the fight. Made no sense. This was a very good card. I will say it's a very good card. If you have not got a chance to see it, it was on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. Just look up the Polo Costa versus Marvin Fattori, uh UFC card, and there are plenty of good fights on this card. Now, next weekend from Abu Dhabi, UFC 267, Jan Blotkovich is fighting Glover Texera. Peter Jan is fighting Corey Sanderhagen for the interim bantamweight title. And Jan Blokovich and uh, Glover Shafira, Teixeira is fighting for the 205 title. So that should be an interesting card. So congratulations to the Braves and Astros for both making it to the Major League World Series which will be starting shortly. Uh, I don't care about either one of these teams, but I really dislike the Astros for cheating my Yankees a couple of years back. So I'm hoping that the Braves, for the first time since the 1990s, can have the World Series championship come to Atlanta. Good luck, Braves. Thursday, we had the Browns beat the Broncos. Wasn't a very good game, but it was what you expect from a Thursday night without starting quarterbacks. It was 17-14. Now, yesterday, the Falcons beat the Dolphins on the late second field goal. The Dolphins are just snake bit, man. Uh, I don't know what uh, this Brian Flores is doing. Once again, like I said, they lose a game on the last second field goal. The Giants shocked me yesterday. They beat the Panthers, and they beat them handily, 25-3. The Bengals stomped a mud hole in the Ravens' ass, 41-17. Joe Barrow to uh, Jamar Chase is something special to watch. If you have not seen the Bengals and you get a chance to see the Bengals, you want to see that tandem. It is awesome so far. It's not being stopped by anybody. And um, I was totally shocked that the Ravens, especially at home, didn't show up more than they did in this game. The Titans stomped the Chiefs 27-3. They also hurt Patrick Mahomes. He had, uh, but so far I heard that he has passed a uh, protocol for concussion, but he had to leave the game. They were never in this game. The Titans were on him from the jump. Patrick Mahomes had like three or four turnovers. This seems to be something going on in the Chiefs. Other than just the defense, the offense isn't clicking either. The Patriots decided to go all college on the Jets and stomp them out 54-13. I believe that uh, Belichick purposely ran up the score because it's a division rival. It was against a rookie, and he wants to let everybody know when he gets a chance to put his foot on your throat, he's going to do it. The Packers beat the Washington football teams as I thought it would happen, 24-10. Washington is not much of anything. 
that young defense, Chase and Sweat, are not doing much this year at all. I don't know if it's sophomore jinx or whatever it is. The Rams beat the, like, the, the Lions. I don't know who the Lions are going to get their first win against. I really don't. Maybe they'll get it on Thanksgiving against the Bears, but by then they'd be something like 10 and 0 oh and 10. So the Rams had an easy day. The Raiders beat the Eagles 33 to 22. This was expected. The Raiders seem to have turned that Gruden corner. They really just needed him out of their lives so that they can go on and play football. And they did this without their best receiver, Waller. The Bucks stomped the Bears 38-3. Brady is looking as good as he has during his 30s. And he's now a 44-year-old man. I mean, he did not miss a beat. The Cardinals, who are undefeated, Beat the Texans 31 to 5. This game was never in doubt. The Cardinals look good. Kyler Murray with those receivers, awesome. They then added Ernst, who's already scoring touchdowns and getting passes. And he actually even blew another touchdown by going the wrong direction. It was miscommunication. And the Colts beat the 49ers last night 30 to 18. The 49ers are not who people thought they are. I believe that they're fraud of a team. Garofalo is not very good. I think he's way overrated, way overpaid. And tonight on Monday Night Football, we got the Seahawks without Russell Wilson. They're going to play the Saints. So I'm taking the Saints at home to beat the Seahawks. Now on Thursday, we got Green Bay versus Arizona. This is a prime time game and this should be a prime time game now the game is in arizona do the cardinals go eight no i believe they do so i'm going to pick them over green bay carolina goes into atlanta and into further notice because donald has been benched i forgot to mention that earlier against the giants they actually benched sam donald i have to take atlanta as being a better team over carolina Miami's going up into Buffalo. I'm taking the Bills. San Francisco is going into Chicago. Chicago might just be a better team with Phils. I just don't believe in San Francisco at all. Pittsburgh is going to Cleveland. I think Cleveland pulls this out. Philly is going into Detroit. I'm going to take the Eagles because they play so damn hard over Detroit Lions. Tennessee is going into Indianapolis. Tennessee is feeling themselves. I like Tennessee in this game. The Bengals, unless they get caught up in a trap game, should beat the Jets in New York. The Rams are going to be playing the Titans in Texas. I'm taking the Rams. New England Patriots are going to the Chargers. The Chargers had a week off. I'm definitely taking the Chargers in this one. Jacksonville is going to Seattle. Seattle should be able to beat Jacksonville at home. The Washington football team is going into Denver. Washington is actually a better team than Denver. The Bucs are going into the Saints. I picked the Bucs to beat the Saints. And Sunday night football game is the Cowboys versus the Vikings. They both had a bye week this week. The Cowboys should be able to go into Minnesota. It could be a bond burner. It could be one of those 38-42 games, but I'm picking the Cowboys offense over Minnesota. And then the Giants go into KC on Monday Night Football. I got to go with the Chiefs. They have to be able to bounce back. If they don't bounce back on Monday, then they're done. I don't think the Giants have the offense to go up against the Chiefs. Oh, and don't forget, NBA is back, people. We're we're fully back in the NBA. The NBA is back. So if you enjoy games, I'll start previewing and reviewing the big games of the week. I'll start doing that starting next week's show. But remember this, please. Love what you love. As long as it's legal, don't let your circumstances, your area, the people around you, or any limitations that's supposed to be put on you because of a nationality, skin color, religion, to not enjoy things in life. If you enjoy something in life, enjoy it. There is no such thing as this is only white. This is only black. This is only Hispanic. No, 
it's the world. It's what you choose to be a part of is what you're allowed to also enjoy. And I'm going to tell you like I tell you each.